Alright guys, just wanted to say sorry, it's been a while since I got a video out, but it's been an interesting few months between a short vacation, two weeks of jury duty, and then testing positive and having to quarantine for coronavirus, it's been an interesting few months. So, finally back up and at it, got all my research done, and uh, what we're going to do today or actually where I'm at right now today, is the Theodore Worth Park in Minneapolis. And it's a very popular park in the city here. Uh, some golf courses, uh, there's a creek, people walk, bike, do all kinds of stuff. But also has a bit of a notorious side. Uh, there seem to be an awful lot of killings that you don't really hear about that happen in this uh, area. That's adjacent right to the north end of Minneapolis. And back in the summer of 96, uh, there was a serial killer by the name of Mark Antonio Prophet, who lived not too far from here, about not even a mile, and uh, killed and dumped the bodies of three women in this park. He had five victims total, uh, four of whom he killed. Three of them, the bodies were put into this park at various places. So we're going to do, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get out. I'm going to walk around and go to the spots where the bodies were found. And then uh, take some shots at uh, Prophet's house where he was living at. And then uh, one of the victims, Avis Warfield, she was the only victim that was found outside of the park. And we'll go see where uh, the site where that body, where her body was uh, found. I'll just give you a little brief synopsis about Prophet. And then we'll uh, get out and get to it. So this is from the court case from the state of Minnesota versus Mark Antonio Prophet. And it's just a little brief little synopsis I didn't had the whole thing written down, so here goes. The jury found Mark Antonio Prophet guilty of two counts of first-degree murder and one count of intentional second-degree murder for the May 1996 killing of Renee Bell. In September or October of 2001, Prophet was found dead in his cell at the Minnesota Correctional Facility in Oak Park Heights. Not one to take prison life lightly, on August 2001, he was charged with attempted murder on a prison guard and was facing an additional 20 plus years to his four life sentences. So there we got a brief synopsis of uh, Mark Antonio Prophet. And so now we're going to go ahead out and we're going to see some of the sites here in the park where three of the victims were found. And then we'll get to it. All right, guys, you can see here, this is Bassett Creek, right in Theodore Worth Park. And right up there is the Plymouth Avenue Bridge. And right here, on May 23rd, 1996, Renee Bell's body was found floating in this creek. A passerby saw a human, partially human arm coming out of the still partially frozen creek and called 911 and that's when uh, police and the coroner showed up and took Renee's body out of here um, you hear all the animals and ducks and everything around here too it's pretty peaceful when pictures of the site of being of a murder and where a human body was found but uh, Renee Bell she was uh, 30 years old when she was killed, and she was a homemaker, and she lived too far from here on uh, the north end of Minneapolis, and she's buried in Hillside Cemetery. Hillside Cemetery is probably going to be our last stop, and that's where Mark Antonio Prophet and two of the victims are buried. So here it is right here. 
the scene in May 23rd, 1996, where Renee was found. All right, guys, we're here at the site of where Deborah Lavoie's body was found. As you can see right in front of us is Bassett Creek again. It's kind of this marshy, swampy area. You see all the down trees and there's train tracks over there. And right in here, in this little area, is where Deborah's body was found. Uh, she was found on June the 3rd, 1996. Uh, her cause of death was ruled homicidal violence. It doesn't say much on her death certificate other than uh, how the injury occurred was unknown. The decedent was injured by another person. Death was obviously ruled a homicide. And this was actually the, uh, as I told you guys earlier, uh, this was the one, the, the murder he was actually convicted of that sent him to prison. Uh, the second crimes he was convicted for was for the assault on Johnson, which she survived, so. Right here, this peaceful little stretch of forest. Poor Miss uh, Deborah was found. Okay, so off to the next one. Alright guys, here we are at the site of where Kyodern Pothesane's body was found. On this little stretch of road right here by some railroad tracks in a wooded area. Now Kyodern was found on July 20th, 1996. Uh, he was 21 years old at the time, and death obviously ruled a homicide, and the cause of death by the coroner was listed as being blunt force head and neck injuries. Right here. As you can tell, right over there is where I just uh, filmed where Renee Bell's spot was. Literally, like right across from here is where both the same body was found. So, off to the next stop. See you then. Okay, guys, so the house that you see here is at 801 Elwood Avenue North in Minneapolis. And in the backyard there that you see on the right, at 5.56 p.m. on June 19, 1996, the body of Avis Warfield was found. Uh, she was discovered by the, some kids that lived in the house, let their parents know, and that's when the police were called. And then the next stop I'm going to show you is the house of Mark Antonio Prophet. Okay guys, so this is the home where Mark Antonio Prophet lived in the 1700 block of Queen Avenue North in Minneapolis. This is where he lived uh, in 1996. He had gotten out of prison and then followed up by a stay at a halfway house and had eventually moved into here. And this is the home where he was living at the time when he started his murder spree and it's not even a mile away from Theodore Worth Park. And this is where he was arrested. All right, guys. So we wound up reaching Hillside Cemetery here where Prophet and two of his victims are buried. In 1,000 feet, turn left. Alright, so as soon as I find the graves, I'll turn you back on and we'll start again. See you in a few minutes. Alright guys, well I finally found it. It took a little while to get to find... Uh, this is the grave of Avis Warfield. One of Mark Antonio Prophet's victims.
as you can see around here most of these graves have flat headstones on them so it takes a while to find them because a lot of them are covered with something fortunately for me avis's family gave her a really nice uh grave marker kind of stands out Let's see if we can get in there there we go Now, let's see if we can find it. Here we go. Now, Avis here was found on June 19th, 1996, in the yard at, uh, where is it here? In the yard of 801 Elwood Avenue North. I'm going to go there and take a picture so you guys can see that. Apologize for the wind. But uh, Avis lived in Minneapolis. She moved here from Chicago. And uh, she was working a, worked as a nursing assistant. And a solicitor cause of death was multiple sharp force injuries ruled a homicide obviously and it says describe how injury occurred the deceased was injured by another person and here she says she was found at 5 56 p.m in that yard on in north minneapolis so there's avis hopefully she's resting in peace now now to go find Renee Bell. See you then. All right, guys, it didn't take long. Avis and Renee here are buried pretty damn close to each other. So this is the grave of Renee Denise Bell. Again, another woman who moved here from Chicago. Uh, she was found on May 23rd, 1996 in Theoworth Park where I showed you where the bodies were found. Uh, Renee, her occupation was a homemaker. And again, she lived in uh, North Minneapolis. Not sure how many kids she had. It's a damn shame what happened to her, these women. So there you have it. Final resting place of resting place, if I could speak English. The Renee Bell. Prophet's first victim. Okay. See you at the next grave. Okay, so I finally found Mark Prophet's grave, and now I know why it was so difficult to find, because he doesn't have a headstone. It's a hillside cemetery here, right by this 540 plot marker, right by a tree. Uh, another thing I found out, his mother is also buried here, but I had no headstone for her either. So just sandwich in between these two markers lies the unmarked grave of the Theo Worth Park killer, Mark Antonio Prophet. So there you have it. See you later. Alright guys, what I forgot to tell you a little bit about Prophet was uh he died in prison in, on September 27th, 2001 in Stillwater Prison, which is the maximum security prison in this state. Uh, his cause of death was listed as tricyclic antidepressant toxicity, which is a fancy way of saying he committed suicide by deliberately overdosing on antidepressants. Um... Death was ruled a suicide by the coroner. And that was the end of 
Mark Antonio Prophet. Buried here in an unmarked grave. Age 38. Alright guys, this is about it for our cemetery visits today. Uh, now Kyodorn Pothesane was uh, cremated in Crystal Lake Cemetery in Minneapolis. And as far as the burial records at that cemetery are concerned, he's not buried there. I guess he was just cremated there and the parents took the ashes and spread them elsewhere or they still have them in their possession so there's no place to go visit or pay your respects or whatever to uh, Kyodorn and then as far as the grave for um, let's see for Deborah Lavoie Deborah Lavoie is, was born in uh, Park Falls, Wisconsin which is way 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 in far north central Wisconsin towards uh, the Upper Peninsula. So she was cremated in Crystal Lake Crematory, the same place that uh, Pothesane was. And then she was brought to a cemetery. Oh, what the hell is the name of it? I'll be able to put it up on the screen later. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's a. Uh, Cemetery in far northern Wisconsin that also has a, for you paranormal fans, also has a pretty heavy reputation for being very haunted. Even It's even made it into a few paranormal books like Haunted Wisconsin, Haunted Road Trips Wisconsin, something like that. So that's it for here. So you can see right here is where the grave of Deborah is in northern Wisconsin. The name of the town is called Fifield, F-I-F-I-E-L-D, Wisconsin. And the name of the cemetery is Forest Home Cemetery. And I'm guessing that the other person there is probably her father that she's buried with. So there you have the final resting place. Deborah. All right, so one of the big problems of doing this video, especially doing my research, it was really hard to find pictures of anybody, which is kind of unusual, but I sent off an email to the Minnesota Department of Corrections and got this mug, intake mug shot of Prophet from uh, May of 97. You can see right there, it looks a little bit different from when he was uh, first arrested. So what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to put some links where you can actually uh, see the newspaper clippings of uh, the story. Because I was only able to find one picture of uh, Kyoto and Pothesane and one other picture of Prophet. So if you want to check those out, I'll put the links in there so you guys can see them and read those articles. Okay, YouTube, so that ends the story of Mark Antonio Prophet, also known as the Theo Worth Park Killer. And again, like before, I said, uh, sorry for taking so long to get another video up. Promise to get a bit more quicker about it uh, from now on. I'd like to get more out there. Um, again, thanks for watching. Subscribe and like. And then I'll see you guys uh, next time. See ya.